Stay tuned for Air Gun Detectives. Hey, welcome to another episode of Airgun Detective. Don't forget, it's where we take the mystery out of the airgun. Again, I hope everybody is safe and healthy. And uh, this episode today, we're going to take the mystery out of how to install the Gamo trigger screw. Okay, and keep in mind, the screw is no way affiliated with Gamo. It's an aftermarket screw. It just happens to be the right diameter and the right size to fit the Gamo rifles. And I'm going to show you how to install that today. But what I want you to understand is this should be installed by a professional. If you're not a really mechanically inclined and comfortable of working on your, your gun, do not attempt to install it. Do not attempt to do anything you see on this video. Have a professional do it. However, if you are mechanically inclined and inclined to do that, I'm going to show you how to do this a safe and efficient way. Okay, so the screws I have available, and they're actually available on my website, and they're really cheap. In fact, I basically give these things away Can you, when you consider I got to put them in an envelope, I got to put a receipt in there, I got to put a stamp on it, and I got to take it to the post office and mail it to you. I'm almost breaking even on these things. But it's a favor to you from me for, to the air gun community because it makes such a big difference on these triggers. You literally are going to take a three and a half or so pound trigger and you're going to turn it into, you can go all the way under two pounds and it's entirely up to you how you want to adjust it. So, but I do sell those screws on my website, and uh, just check those out at www.airgundetectives.com. Also, do me a favor, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please hit that subscribe button down there. Really helps with the channel, keeps us going. Um, if you'd like to be notified when we release new videos, please hit that little bell right there. And in addition to that, if you would like to give us your feedback, give us your feedback. Give us some thumbs up, minimum comments are great, and I appreciate all of those you take your time to leave the comments. Especially some of you that have actually emailed me and sent me messages appreciating the videos and the content that we're doing. I really appreciate that. It keeps me going because I'm doing this as a hobby. This is a hobby. It's a retirement hobby, okay? So anyway, as I said, at your own risk, you install these. But uh, basically, it's this little teeny screw right here. It's a very small, it's a metric 2.5 to a .45 by 10. I like to go with the 10. Some people say the 8. There's a reason I go with the 10. A little more room for adjustment, a little more room to handle the, the, the screw itself, putting it in and out. Now, this will go in either the cat trigger or the sat trigger. And how you identify that, the sat trigger, they're both plastic triggers. The sat trigger is nice and smooth. See, there's no holes in it. And uh, there's not a single stage adjustment, but honestly, when you put this screw in, the sat trigger is every bit as good as the cat trigger, in my opinion. Because you have a nice, smooth, little soft um, take up, and then it runs into a wall, and you know exactly when the gun's going to go off. So this right here is a sat trigger, smooth action um, trigger. All right, so let me move this one in front here, and I want to show you the difference of what a cat trigger looks like. Okay, the cat trigger has these little holes in it. If you can see these little teeny holes right in the trigger, right around here. That's how you identify if it's a cat trigger. So this screw will work in either the, the cat trigger or the sat trigger, either one. And yes, these are my bipods that I sell uh, on my website as well. And man, have I been getting some solid feedback on these. As I knew I would because it is such a stable platform. If you haven't shot off these bipods, what do you do? You, you will absolutely drastically improve your accuracy. So stay tuned. I'm going to show you how to safely install this screw. And until next time, thanks for tuning in. Let's test this right out of the box and see what we get out of this thing. Okay. Okay. 3 pounds, 8.8 .8 ounces. So 3 pounds, 8.8 .8 ounces. That's what it is with the standard screw in there. So let's move on to the next segment. Keep in mind, if you're not a gunsmith or a professional, I wouldn't suggest you do this. If you're actually really handy and you're really good at working on things, that's entirely up to you. But I'm not endorsing you to do this. I'm endorsing a professional to do this. Those are the legal reasons. Okay, what you're going to need for this you need a small Phillips screwdriver. You're going to need some blue thread lock, ideally. You're going to need one of my um, um, 
trigger screws, which is the M2.5 by the 0.45 by 10. I like the 10. Some people say an 8. I like the 10 because it gives you a little bit more room to manipulate when you're putting this in. Yeah, it'll stick out a little bit, but I sell these on my website. They're really cheap. In fact, I don't even charge you shipping because most of the time I just throw a stamp on it. But um, anyway, let's show you how to change these out. But that's all you're going to need is those items right there. Oh, and then the Allen wrench. The Allen wrench is a 1.27 millimeter. That's what you need for the new little screw that's going to go in there. A 1.27 millimeter Allen wrench. So first of all, you see these openings in the bottom of the, the uh, trigger guard here. If you go to this, not where the fire safety is, but go behind the trigger right there, there's a little teeny Phillips head screwdriver. Just take this screw out. What the screw does, it engages your sear, and your sear is what um, catches the piston when it comes back and engages that. So when you push, pull your trigger, the actual, there we go. So here's your, this is your um, little screw that you're going to remove, okay? Put that, and keep that. Don't discard that. Make sure you put that in a safe place, because if you ever have to send your gun back for any type of warranty, work. You want to remove that screw and put the stock screw back in there because you don't want to take any chances of avoiding any type of warranty. Okay, so we hang on to that. So now we just simply take our new screw. I like to put a little bit of Loctite on it. Just, just a couple little drops here. Actually, I should say just one drop. And then we're just going to reinsert that right back in to where we moved the other screw. There we go. And you're just going to rotate it just very loosely, very loosely, until you come up to a little bit of resistance. And then that's when you're going to stop. Because if you screw this in too far, you can cock the gun and it won't engage the sear. And you'll go, oh, my gun's broken. I cock it and it doesn't engage. No, just, just back the screw off and allow that sear to catch the piston. So anyway, so you want to rotate this screw in. You want to go at least, to start off, go with the depth of the stock screw. And then, so right now I'm feeling a little bit of resistance. So that's when you want to just kind of stop. And this is when you're going to go by quarter of a turn. And you're just going to test this. So you're going to... Obviously, don't dry fire your gun. It's not a good habit, but you want to test the trigger. So right there, I still want a little bit more. That's not quite enough. So I rotate it a little bit more. And I'm pretty good at this, so I know I need at least, I need like two full turns on that one. But let's see. Okay, it engaged nicely. This is good. Now we're going to test it again. Ooh, it's getting much better. Much, much, much better. But me, I still like a light trigger. But you don't want to go too far because you don't want to create a hair trigger. You want the trigger to still be safe. And obviously, if you're hunting with this, you don't want the lighter trigger. The target shooting wants the lighter trigger. I'm going to go another half turn. And we'll see how that is. All right, let's test this trigger now that I think I found my final setting there. I like a little lighter trigger because I do a lot of target shooting. But if you're like hunting, you probably don't want much lighter than about a two and a half pound trigger. So let's, let's see where we're at here. All right. One pound, 12 ounces. <laughs> Amazing. We went from roughly a three and a half pound trigger to a one pound, 12 ounce trigger. It's fantastic. And remember, keep in mind, once you get your final setting, cock that gun, give it some bumps, make sure that that sear is not gonna engage and it's gonna fire. You do not want a hair trigger, safety first. Don't want a hair trigger, so give it some bumps and make sure that's not gonna go off. But very, very simple process. Again, if you're not a professional, don't attempt this. When you do, or if you do, and you feel confident enough that you want to do this on your own, make sure you're in a nice, safe environment. Um, make sure you're, um, 
your guns pointed downrange because obviously you're going to want to test it with rounds in it. But set yourself up in a nice safe place and just take your time. Little quarter turns at a time, half, half turn at the most. And once you find that sweet spot, you're all set. And then your uh, little blue thread lock will keep that screw in place and you're good to go. Very, very inexpensive um, upgrade and it turns this trigger, seriously, it turns it into an average trigger to a great trigger. It really does. As you saw that, it's under a two pound trigger on a brake barrel. You can't beat it. And the adjustment levels are fantastic. So you can just put it, tune it just to your liking. Oh, and this works both on the sat triggers and the cat triggers. So either one of those would be great for you. So, all right. Thanks for tuning in.